What's up, everybody? Back again, Warp Charge Gaming, and it is good to see you for episode seven of the Infinity Talk Show. I'm George, and this is Brad, and that's Zach, and that's Chris, and uh, we are a good amount of what exists of the RVA Infinity players. Um, there is a few. There's a few more of us, and I hope to be many more. I love this game, and uh, I look forward to actually playing it. Uh, more regularly in person and in the ways that we used to. Hopefully that's not far off. We've had a new year come. Apparently there's vaccines out there, and that's good. Not, not a subject I want to go too crazy on, but I'm happy about it. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, there's for now, there's been um, we've been playing games, and that's what we talk about on this show is the games that we play. And um, Infinity, the wonderful game that Corpus Belly provides us. We're in the fourth edition that came out not long ago. For those that don't know, that might be randomly tuning in for the first time to episode seven of the Infinity Talk Show. Not a ton on the docket tonight, as there has been the uh, last couple weeks have been a blur of things that have happened uh, that are not Infinity related. But we're going to bullshit about whatever we feel like, and I hope that people enjoy the conversation. <laughs> Please, if you're out there, feel free to join us uh, and uh, say what you like. Um, yeah, so gentlemen, um, that we were starting off just a moment ago talking about how um, the in Infinity, it's what do you think about you know how often have you in your time decided that you should go second after deploying first? You're like, damn it, my whole list, my plan is built around second, but they won that whip roll and they're forcing you to deploy first. Have you when you have chose? I'm sure we've all chose to go second and deploy first at some point. Has it well, worked? I, I know deploying second in this case is very good because it looks like you're uh, you're streaming on your Morats versus Assassins. Oh, is that what I did? Yeah. I thought it, no, I should have changed the title here. Well, at least on, on live it doesn't look that way. But, you know, um, I mean, good topic, though. Uh, I think last season... The, the onus is really on going first when, when Alpha Strike is really at its peak. And you could really leverage those untold however many orders you can fit into a list. Um, the, the few times, if, although it, it is true, the few times that, that, that I lost was usually down to last turn, last round, being able to do something. But more often than not, Usually, I would have lost either to the Alpha Strike, uh, putting me back on the on on the back foot, or or an almost Alpha Strike taking the initiative and and preventing me from getting out. Okay. Uh, I, I I don't know how if the Alpha Strike has been mitigated at all with these fifteen order minimums, but considering now we have a lot more NCOs and tack aware, um, I don't I don't think the Alpha Strike's really mitigated at all. Yeah, I mean, you got to also not to mention there's more things that have like parachute deploy. Um, you can, I think it used to be, uh, well, combat jumps just better as well um, without yeah. the dis dispersion. Um, so, yeah, there's, a, a, I'm trying to think of something that, did, uh, that didn't, it used to require a minus three, but doesn't now. But I think I'm just thinking of the, um, uh, the, f the paramedics change where paramedics don't uh, apply the, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the minus three <clears throat> but yeah but yeah, yeah it, it, the alpha strike doesn't is there anything it's it could be argued that it's even better there's just less orders to maybe dump into it uh into other things at the same time but yeah i've i've found for the most part that it's usually because my I, my buddy on the channel mike the other day did it as well and he deployed first but went second and it didn't turn out good and i think in general it's probably a risky shaky bit decision to be making yeah, I, I really think the only thing that can mitigate Alpha Strike is simply mission structure in round-by-round round scoring. Sure. Yeah. That's or the, multitude of objectives. I, I, yeah. Go ahead. I, it, I, I think it depends on um, how good the Alpha Strike does. Even with the mission, I mean, if, if you've lost too much, there's a hard, it's hard to come back from that. Yeah. Well, funny, funny enough, I if, have if you're to, going uh, second. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the, the I think that's where we were just mentioning just kind of that missions that play turn by turn. Um, some folks will just basically say that that can have a little bit more balance to it where the turn order isn't so relevant to the win condition. 
you know, a lot of these missions where it's the end of game scoring, that last to act moment can be a winner, uh, a game breaking uh, uh, thing. You know, it can really be, or wouldn't just say game breaking, but very, very advantageous to be able to have that last to act, you know, mm -hmm. uh, gi giving an advantage. And the, the, obviously balance would be the most even keel amount of uh, advantage that we, we could have. Uh, I do I do like deployment zones to be a, a guess and going I like first and second and the map to really do a good job at giving that to, to make that a hard choice. Um, and that's been an interesting thing about these infinity leagues and just what's been going on over the last couple of weeks to call out real quick is one I just played a match today a match yesterday been doing a lot of virtual tabletop simulator battles um, just did a first training session with Brad today on some tabletop simulator that was pretty cool. Um, but just joined up with like ODD is a, um, a, a tournament that is near to our area here in Northern Virginia, uh, played at Huzzah Hobbies typically, and this year is going to be offline or not in person and online. And uh, so we just recently joined up for that to play that on Tabletop Simulator, and that'll be going on on the 28th. I think people can still join that. Yep. It'll be going on through February. And then I just joined the uh, Remote Access League Season 3 on the Infinity The Game Discord server. Um, and there's a, I really like that server. The Infinity the Game server seems to have like um, pretty good-hearted folks there. Um, you know, sometimes you can see kind of the dark side of our community as we argue about things and whatnot. And uh, I've found there to be a pretty uh, upbeat um, group of, of, of folks there that are happy to help one another learn the game and, and recognize it's a tough game to, to learn. <laughs> um, so a lot of good, good advice going on around there. But I just played my first match today. I did a challenge match against uh, Lucas. Uh, I'll call him just Perzan as his Discord name. And his last name is tough to say. Um, but my friend from overseas, and it was great to get to meet him finally. I've seen him all across the internets, um, just being active inside the community, whether it's the, the painting side and the hobby side or helping people uh, with questions. He's been watching our videos for a long time. So that was awesome. He gave it to me handedly. He brought the assassins, and we were just talking about the whole go first, go second thing. Well. Um, I chose to go first and tried to alpha strike and you know we talked about how strong that alpha strike could be and his um, he did a, a, a very defensive assassins list that was extremely powerful and I hadn't necessarily gone up against it yet um, it was four Asawaras he had a very powerful like 10 man core uh, like a uh, combat group and he just uh, you know threw all his day lamis he took like four four day lamis and two mud I think uh, as his kind of like just defensive perimeter defense with the jammers. And he put these, you know, um, camo infiltrating Panzerfaust with these Delamis all over the place, mixed them with the mine layer as well to just make another camo token to get intermixed with uh, some of his other camo. And otherwise, it was four Asawaras, one of them being a Harris, one of them being an Ayara Haddad cord link team. Uh, and his Harris, they each the Harris had an AP Spitfire with two Doctors, and the other one was a uh, AP Spitfire with Yara and a Moyib uh, heavy rocket launcher and a, and a hacker, I think. Uh, but it was powerful, you know. Those th that Harris and that core were beefcakes. He locked me down with the Yaras, and then if I wanted to go anywhere that mattered, he had extremely good trade-up units in camo ready to. Uh, and that camo state was so nice to uh, for the 360 line of fire, because so I was trying to come in with parachute deploy, but he, I couldn't get around his facing because of the camo state, yeah. you know which was powerful. So I, w I was trying to uh, slam him with Raziat's an excellent Rambo piece. It's parachute deploy, has combat jump. I had Evo hackers, could have jumped in on a 16 um, and have eclipse grenades. And they're CC badasses, natural born warrior. You know, they're, they're ready to go back there and hurt something. Um, but they're also just one wound in armor too. And if you mess up, it can be over quick, you know, to accidentally mistake a camo token um, where it was actually a mine. You know, I threw down some eclipse grenades like, ah, ha, ha, and it was a mine. I was like, no. <laughs> and the Asawira really don't care about your natural born warrior. They're not relying on their martial arts to do damage to you. Yeah. And their armor four man beefcake. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, and plus, that, that was really tough. I, I really uh, found that challenging to go Dude, up against. monkey smack. Yeah, he, he put me down hard, I got to say. Uh, but we had fun, a great sport, good times, and uh, just these last few games in general have been lessons uh, and, you know, been trying to figure out where I need to tweak the, um, the, the mix of combat versus mission. 
is a lot of what Brad and I have talked about this afternoon as far as, you know, and, and then, the, you know, you're, 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 and a lot of people, I think, wonder about this is just list building. You know, do you do 8-7 split, a 9-6 split? Do you go the 10-5 and refill? And it's all different. There's no 100% right answer in this game because it's, you know, play style and army. Yeah, fo- folks are still kind of experimenting with the different ways you can do it. I, I have heard a popular notion coming out is that you put the five orders as your defensive order pool. You put your Delamis there, you put your TR bots yeah. there, and then the 10 order pool is where you put your active pieces and active fire teams yeah i i i, I and I, I also like putting the um like for combined i've like putting the taigas in that second group putting just like the irregular impetuous guys that mm-hmm. are like chain rifles and are there to hang hug corners you know um but yeah man it was it was tough to um the, the, the all those day lamis really uh, got me thinking yeah <laughs> his Hassas, is a really in a good place where they can be really good on the defense and really buffer against that alpha strike mostly because of how cheap those Delamis are six points and no switch gets you that light shock and Panzerfaust uh inferior infiltration mm-hmm. uh, i'm sorry not inferior infiltration uh limited camouflage yeah um and you just throw those down wherever you want and then they also have the new um uh cosplay noctifer which is the um I what the name of it is the the nadir 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 um with their with their flamen spear so i mean they've got they can really handicap an alpha strike yeah tanako uh it's good to see you again buddy thanks for tuning in he says he likes the eight seven with a lot of his list i i've been attempting that a lot um lately and i'm starting to question myself because i feel like i'm sorry but i'm definitely not executing it well um but you know with tactical awareness and stratagos you know if you get like plus one lieutenant order and stratagos so there's lots there's lots of ways to bolster that eight seven mm-hmm. um you know and uh I've, i definitely like when it works it feels really good you feel like your orders almost never end you know you're like great i got all these orders and i still got all these other orders like sometimes that's how it feels when it's going good but What's been happening to me lately is I'll lose a couple of the key. I'm, I'm usually having like five of the seven be oriented at just being cheerleaders. And the, there's like two main people in that group. And then those two guys will get wrecked somehow. And the other five are kind of left idle and not supporting anyone anymore. And it, it's, um, I've been trying to, I've been struggling with that. I was asking Brad, does he like doing like um, combat in one group? and uh objective grabbers and, and specialists in the other or do you do a mix a mixed bag and you, you said you like to evenly split I'd like, yeah I've, I've been doing the nine six uh the second group of six is just a core link and a refill and that core link can be either offensive or defensive and they can grab objectives and then that group of nine can grab objectives and kill yeah, I like that concept of just having a six six man combat group that is basically a five man link and a refill, and that they're self sufficient. They're both defense and offense hybrid, objective grabbers. That's a very independent, self sufficient unit. I like that. Tanako, uh, what I do with my seven order pool is do coordinated orders to deal with links that are standing up. And my example is two uh, Fort Observer Nokens and maybe a couple other stuff. Um, I think I think coordinated orders are something that that also is just like I haven't been touching near enough or or effectively. There's a lot of there's a lot of different ways to attack a yeah. attack this game, and I think there's a, some finesse with those coordinated orders that they honestly I've been using my command tokens to fix uh, fix mistakes like <laughs> reforming my link team, uh, you know, or uh, moving guys around because somebody died. I, I, I maybe I do feel like I spend a lot of my command tokens moving moving guys between order pools. Yeah. The fast yeah, I, I say it, it really depends kind of what you're playing too, because um, if if you're not like like the coordinated order things, if you play um, Caledonia Highlander Army, the, the fun way to play that with coordinated orders is to use the free coordinated that inspiring leadership gave you gives you. Um, use the T two uh, two T two snipers and the missile launcher. Um, I think it's it's changed for N4 now. I think the points changed, so it's harder to bring that list for those. But um, you coordinate those three against a single piece, and one of them is going to land. If it's the missile launcher, great. If it's all of them, the piece is going to die. Um, if you're playing, you, you in the past have played a lot of um, tech, which 
you generally want to get up close, so your coordinated isn't as you generally haven't been using that as frequently. So, um, mm -hmm. if you put those longer range, um, you know, really high damage pieces in your list and coordinate them uh, against a single target, that target only arrows against one of them. So, um, he's gonna have to pick and choose, and two of them are probably gonna hit. If you're unlucky like me, sometimes they all miss, and then one of them dies, and you try it again, and they beat you. So, but <laughs> when it does work, when it when it does work, it's awesome. Yo, I totally forgot that inspiring leadership gives you a free yeah. coordinated order. Um, yeah, once per turn. So uh, I'm I'm yep. so mad. I played four. Very rounds. useful. I played four rounds with William Wallace and Cosmoflot in this Vol SC tournament, and I have not done that once. <laughs> I'm pulling yeah, it up. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. It depends. I mean, if you're bringing bears, if you're bringing bears and dogs, I mean, you could use it to get them to move so that they only ARO against one of them. Um, but if you have some long-range snipers, then why not go ahead and use that at least once? It's free. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's free. Man, I feel like I've totally been missing. Yep. Watch my next, my next, my final round, round five. I'm just going to coordinate it order all the time, and it's going to be, like, so effective. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's just funny, guys, because I, I stream games, you know, like I know how to play this well. And uh, people tune in like, sweet, here's a great game, and then I get my ass kicked. <laughs> so, sometimes, not always. <laughs> yeah <laughs> as my voice cracks oh man it's been interesting i've been getting the rules right though I, yeah yep. <laughs> take that world <laughs> hey that's always good yeah as long as people can watch and learn you know even yeah. if i'm even though i'm getting my ass kicked it's okay they're still learning exactly we can all learn together somebody somebody's gonna buy me a beer one day ah <laughs> uh, um yeah, so that their tactics are good, and uh, sometimes it happens in the list building stage, and sometimes it's uh, a lot more in the deployment. And I, th I think looking for lanes and learning learning how to study a map is another very important part of the game. And sometimes it can be um, that can be one of the more frustrating ways to 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 feel like you beat yourself almost because it can happen right from the yeah. get go. And one of the challenges I think I've found in these tabletop simulator matches is today, like I played on a beautiful uh, MicroArt Studios uh, board. It was featured all this awesome MicroArt Studio terrain that was featured by them. They they put, inputted it into the virtual environment and you know worked hard to give us a really cool looking map. Uh, but it, it was made to look cool more than be extremely functional. And um, it was very tactical, very functional, but it was challenging um, to to digest everything that's inside that environment. It's like when you're playing a tournament, you know, you're, you're really wanting to do your best. And sometimes when the, you feel like the, the map is almost like a third player almost, you know, that you're trying to navigate and beat. And if you've had more experience, like looking at that map and getting to hang out on it, you might find more nooks and crannies and, and paths to find than the other opponent. Um, this particular map today, it had all these multiple levels and a lot of, um, uh, balconies and nooks and crannies and it made it really challenging to be able to digest where everything was you couldn't easily identify okay there's all your models you'd have to really pay attention it could make some mistakes pretty easily um, so that was that was a challenge um, I found yeah, yeah an, an infinity battle is three things your lit your yeah. army their army and the table yeah definitely I, I think uh, before you play uh, if, if you can talk to at least at a, a regular event Talk to the person who brought the table, and um, and at least figure out kind of what how they recommend playing the board. Um, uh, there's a Hack of Lime inspired table that was at ODD last year as well, the Baltimore Brawl. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of open spaces that look like they could be played as just kind of shoot through, um, but uh, the 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 way that the creator recommended playing it. I don't know if this maybe this that's how this board's played. Um, is you shoot into and out of, but not through these kind of overhang room type yeah. setups. Um, we weren't playing that way, and it if you're not playing with a bunch of long range pieces and you're trying to go up against them, um, it's brutally one sided. 
Yeah, um, the that Hockles on table in particular, uh, when you look at it on an initial run through, it looks like there's plenty of cover. There's plenty oh, of yeah. corners. Yep. But then once you start getting on street level and you start moving your miles around, you see like, wait, hold on. There's not actually any cover for like a 12 inch stretch. There's, there's nothing yeah. for me to do. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you got to be careful with tables like that. Yeah. Yeah. The, and, and, and um, you know, talk to your opponent first. It's always, always a good idea to kind of get on the same page with um, playing, playing everything the same way. Try and think about what you might be doing, um, the type of cover you may encounter, and moving through buildings. Because there's a lot of open space that you can move through. Um, if you can shoot into but not through, then treat that as a solid object when you're walking around it. But it doesn't seem that way because there's just so much space. Yeah, the Infinity does technically have rules for shooting through buildings. It's a saturation right. zone, I think. Essentially, minus one burst, yeah. minus three to shoot through. But the issue is we have a lot of tables that have a lot of open windows. Uh, that That's still a lot of arrows coming back at you. Definitely always get at a model's eye view for vantage points, for street level. Just kind of yeah. see where people can put models and where those sight lines will be. If you're seeing sight lines from a point that's just the entire board, you might want to rethink how some items are on that board. Yeah, totally. Do you guys have um, a YouTube monitor or anything open? I actually have a bunch of footage from Baltimore Brawl that I've never shown before, um, and it has that Hakkasan board on it. Uh, if you're if you're monitoring YouTube, you'll be able to see it. I'm yeah, I'm on it. YouTube. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to show it to the audience yep. here. Uh, I got several it's beautiful several board. board. Yeah, we'll see. If oh, I can find, definitely. We, we'll see if I can find it. I have several uh, GoPro. Uh, yeah. shots walking around. I'm going to hit play on this. Yeah, it's a few years old. I, I remember uh, the original Baltimore Brawl I came there. It was there. Yeah, it was definitely there. Uh, this was, this was, there's Brad's board right there. Yeah. Is that, Br oh, Brad's board in back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. This is, this is my first uh, satellite event. We talked about satellites and stuff last uh, talk show. This is definitely far from it. I don't know why it's glitching. I'll move around a little bit. Ooh, these are pretty. This is what a uh, this is in Baltimore, the Baltimore Brawl Classic uh, Tournament. If anybody's watching right now and wondering what what that is, I'll re narrate that. Oh yeah, I can this, see. this was a good board. I got a Marauder Link team when they all tried to hide behind that tanker truck. <laughs> they nice. did hide behind the tanker truck. I don't know why it's glitching around like that. That board is beautiful. I had pause on it. Yeah. I like the I like the uh, game out of U terrain they used. This yeah, I played on that board. Oh, cool. um, that was fun. I like this yeah. one. I like I, outdoor. You know, we always talk about infinite. I mean, here at Battlegrounds, a lot of our boards are just endless warehouses, and I, I really like it. A lot of are, boards are, yeah. Yeah, I like when they're outside. Yeah, so I played on, on that board at ODD last year, and it had a center. I think it was an objective room one. Um, and that's a surprisingly difficult board to play on sometimes. Without basically, there's 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 no hard corners really, and and if someone wants to rambo in, you can get hit pretty hard. Yeah. Oh, there, this is a terrain we have here at the shop that's been on our. Uh, someone asked, did we have any um, Pano players? Uh, we I used to. Yeah. No, we, we're all good players. <laughs> oh come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> our, our buddy Mike, he plays military orders, um, but it's pretty light-handed. Uh, well, also Joey, he's a player that's up and coming. Uh, yeah, he does. He's playing Varuna. Pano. Varuna. Yeah. Yep. So we we have we've not been able to feature very much Pano on the channel. Ooh, here's the Hakkasan board. Yes. There. Yeah, and uh, oh, um, Ross. No, that's not, not it. Oh, that that wasn't the Hakkasan board. Oh, there it is. Yep, that's yeah, it that's right there. It. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's not. coming over here. Let's see if we get a I good mean, it's shot. It's beautiful, man. It is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got it. He's got LEDs set up on it. Was this what you this were talking about? Cool. Oh, I see these rooms and stuff yeah. up here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those blocks you need to treat as. Yeah, these buildings are yeah. awesome. Yeah, and at ODD it was um, it was basically a sniper tower on one side. Um, it was similar, but yeah, that that top tower over there, oof, man, getting through that with the courtyard in the middle. There was just basically giant lines of fire that were you know 30, 40 inches long in the yeah. This uh, this shot uh, MSV two sniper was basically like I don't care about your army or smoke. So you talking about this, are you, this board right here. I remember, I think this is the one you played on where you put a sniper. I played on that one. Yeah, I yeah, put a yeah. TR bot in the, in the top tower and yeah. everything that came from his side of the board got TR botted. 
played. He didn't on get this anything out of his deployment before. zone. I, I played oh. on the I played oh. on this table my first time going against the Avatar. I think I played on this table round four, and we were both like really delirious, and I was wrecking him. I was doing such a good job. Yeah, this but, is. But then this this like, is this <laughs> is definitely not a great, a great table. Cut. Yeah. This, with how low terrain is, you don't want sniper towers in the deployment zone. This, because, this, yeah, my uh, yeah. TR bot, even at long range up there, I was hitting everything. I'm a TR bot. I was yeah. just looking for crits, and that's what I was getting. This was the table at the at the event that was the example of a bad table, for sure. The ones that yeah. you, hear, you hear about, you might get matched up on a table that's very open, and there's these lanes where there's no escape. I mean, you can just see right here this gray tower right in front of me. You can see even the one on the other side. It's symmetrical in that, but you can see everything. Yeah, yeah this was the tag mission, which I had the double Maggie list for. And I specifically decided not to use double Maggies because I had a TR bot in my other list, and I knew what a TR bot would do in that nest. <laughs> yeah, that's what you can say. You got to play the, yeah. map, the map, right? And Maggie wouldn't fit up in the tower. No. No, Maggie would not fit in the tower. <laughs> oh man, I, I the avatar player was funny because he baited me into killing his avatar and then went into retreat and won. <laughs> <laughs> Classic George. Move. Oh, yep. this, oh I, yep. had a great, I had a great time on this table. Um, I played Ariadna versus Ariadna, attack versus attack. It was a war core from the area. That was awesome. We had a good nice. time. Good time. Yeah, what's this game store called again? Uh, games uh, this and stuff. is uh, games, and stuff. games yeah. and stuff, yeah. Up in Maryland. Oh, that was Chris. <laughs> yeah, oh, this is, seeing all these people together in good times, my God. Uh, know, the man. before what times. What, what, is, what is that? Well, look, there I am again. Let's see if I can load up one more. There we go. This is, oh yeah, there's my. Uh, this is this was my Baltimore brawl list. Yeah, I missed Baltimore brawl this year. That was cool. Yeah. I've been on everyone since it started. And this is the one year we couldn't go. I was gonna go to both ODD and Baltimore brawl. Yeah, I was too. Ugh. Oh, that guy was super nice. That was my round one opponent. He was a great guy. Oh, and there's the shitty board. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Hey, look, there's a TR bot in that tower. Look at that. Look, tower, TR bot. Who would have thunk it? Yeah. <laughs> right yeah. behind his elbow. <laughs> Those Ooh, the towers are not okay. There's that beautiful Hakkasan board again. It does look great. We're too scared to play actual Finney, at least in my minute. <laughs> That's the av uh, I don't want to say anything's broken, but the avatar needs something. Yeah. It's just, it's you really mean it needs really something less. Bad. It needs something less. Either lose its <laughs> tack wear or lose lieutenant order because it it's it's obscene. They could just make it, it more because the usual, the usual order. tactic for killing avatar lists is oh just kill the cheerleaders. Well, you can go through six cheerleaders and it will still have eight orders. Yeah. Yeah. That's not okay. Like if you can sh kill the entire enemy army and it still has five orders to chew on and which is perfectly enough to do things, that hey. that is a problem. That is a definitive problem. And at least in N3, I mean, he had ODD, so a flamethrower could Yeah, you could you could flamethrower head off. You could yeah, burn that off. It was always yeah. worth sacrificing a poor, poor flamethrower guy. Yeah, Tanaka. Oblivion's fine if his whip wasn't so high for reset and his and his uh, BTS was at nine. Yeah, <laughs> he's pretty good at all those things. Yeah. Yeah, he's really, really hard to deal with. I think I think EM weapons are the new good go-to, but uh, I mean, you got to get your EM weapon there. Yeah, yeah, you got to get your wep EM weapon there, and his BTS is still high. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't feel good. It's scary. Basically, what you want is, like, uh, a repeater where he's going to walk and then, like, a handful of hackers. Yeah, a handful of hackers. That is true. Or just a dog. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah or wolf. I, don't, I, I don't... mean, <laughs> yeah, but is his CC still, what, like, 19 or something? It's, it's, it's still not 90, terrible. 90. Yeah, and the I... problem is one army has dogs. Yeah. No. A lot of other armies, a lot of the war bands <laughs> have... Uh... Carm Rama's got yeah. Carmen and... Carmen has a cube. Yeah. Big I, doesn't I, have Monk a cube. Will solve, I Monk will, will solve the problem. Or band. Yeah. Yeah, Monk, Monks could do it. Um, we were talking, Brad and I were uh, talking. They have about no cube, so that's uh, an advantage. 
I love Yara Haddad, and one of the ways I fell in love with Yara was when I was shooting an avatar down with MSV2 through smoke. And that got it done. AP marksman rifle, that took down an avatar. Just a few shots, you know? Couple Get a couple crits in there. Yara Haddad in a five-man link against the avatar shooting through smoke is pretty effective with AP marksman. Um, you know, granted, it's nice to have a little bit more damage on there. Oh, also K1. K, K1's a great way to say screw K1 you. is a great way. Goodbye, Avatar. K, K1 nowadays is just Money. so good. Yeah. K1 good. got a soft buff, and it hasn't even been touched. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, it, it falls in the K1. There's not a whole lot of K1, though. There's not, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then that, that's when we started. I flipped out on that. Uh, what was it? A left that had a K1 sniper that was linkable. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Taus. No. Tauser. No. Tauser, but he's not linkable. Yeah. Not linkable. But yeah, Tauser with a with a K1 sniper. That's actually very viable now. Yeah, it's nasty. Like it, that. That's an actual discussion. Do I want to take the foyer back or do I want to take the K1 sniper? Mm-hmm. Yeah, depending on who you're up against. Yeah. Yeah, I was going against four Asawaras today, and I should have—I would have liked some K1. I should have took my on. Not good. Don't only Wabons have cubes. Great. I think well, even, they do. Even if he gets cubed, I mean, though, they—they're and an EM attack would still. Yeah, work. but you're going to have an engineer's going to take care of the EM attack, and now you've got an only Wabon. Yeah, you get oh. Seps around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah. just a trade, it's a gain. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, that's cute. Oh, no, I can't do anything. Hey, Dr. Worm, got work for you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the. Uh, Oni, I think Oni Wabans lost their smoke, didn't they? I think now only the I character. Think they had it. Kitsune had. I thought they had smoke. I thought it was only... Kitsune, Kitsune only ever have smoke. Had it's smoke. Kitsune only. Yeah. Well, now, the, I, th uh, I thought they used to. No. no, they never did. They never did? Yeah, okay. It was Kitsune, you always... Saito, and Yojimbo is yeah. the only one that smokes. That's and that's that's why when um, Saito had specialist operative, it was basically him and Kitsune because it was they, could, they both brought smoke, which made them super nice. Gotcha. I mean, Saito's still really great. Oh, Saito is still really good, yeah. Objective's done, you know, as well. I yeah. mean, when your objective is murder, 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 they get it done real good. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um, I'm my mind is still uh, coiling over uh, conversation Brad and I were having about uh, accomplishing the mission and just like how we're now and in for. I, Brad, you've been mentioning that you're sort of taking less. Uh, it used to be like we take like you know, five to seven, take a large amount of specialists. If a mission needed specialists, you take a whole bunch of them. But now it seems like lists are becoming less specialist and maybe you play the mission, you play the positional game and killing uh, maybe a majority of the turn with a mission being a smaller fraction of the turn. Maybe the well, more than it used to be. Play style has changed a bit because bear in mind, our meta brings a lot of just all comers lists because a lot of us are just coming straight from work. We don't, we're not deciding on missions until we get there. And so we'll just throw a mission down. We'll pull out one of our all comers lists and do the mission. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think now with all these new people and the fact that uh, Brad, you're making lists per week or month or, or no, I'm making, just making missions all per week lists or month. And running them towards uh, the mission. Or yeah. And, them. and, so building the list to the mission is a lot easier when you know your mission's coming in. Yeah. I, and I don't, really and I think a lot of missions now don't need a lot of specialists. Yeah. I'm finding four, five, maybe is a good point for me. <laughs> yeah, Eric, that that's not how we've done it. We've always just been like, it's Thursday night. We're going to show up. We've got a pile of lists. Ah, this is the mission we're playing throw it down well normally i will we've had the tournaments every month well yeah in you, the past usually we're playing the the next month's tournament missions yeah but we're not pro players so we never actually practiced our lists for tournaments oh, we always man. just screwed around and then figured out the tournament list like the week before that's <laughs> always how we've done it don't lie to yourselves <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, I, I mean that's changed fair. Mind the week before <laughs> um yeah I, you you have always done that brad yeah. How to play this shot? No, nope, doesn't bring this shot. Brings no uh, Ross has changed his list the day before. Yeah. I, I do all my. I do. And his of, army. I do. And his army. That's true. Well, I did that the first year. <laughs> the first year I went to Baltimore, 
I practiced, uh, well, I, I still played the same army, but I was set on Bakunin list for a month. And then two days before, it's like, man, I'm just going to change these lists. I like these better. <laughs> Never played them, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to do tons and tons of planning of what I think I'm going to do. And then when I get to the actual table, it all just goes out the window and I just charge my opponent. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the problem I have is I have a lot of, of uh uh, customized minis and i have the model and i have the units that i really like that i like to play and that bit me in the butt real bad at last baltimore brawl where my lists were decidedly not good for the missions and the tables i was playing on it's just like i needed infiltrators i needed forward deployers and i'm like but i didn't want to play any of those so i didn't and my <laughs> my singular win is a testament to that and that's all I got. <laughs> and I and they they were all good defeats too. I scared them all, bro. I scared them all, Zach. <laughs> they were they were all so scared. Yeah, I, I was telling Brad that if it was just I, I'm happy if by the, when you hit turn three, if you and your opponent don't necessarily know who's gonna win yet. Like that's the that's the benchmark of a good game. You get to turn yeah. three and nobody knows what's gonna happen yet. And so that's what I'm striving to make my mission right now is just to make it to turn three without anybody knowing who's <laughs> going to win already. Yeah. I, I, I think patience. I, that's what I think I've been struggling with is and, and, mm -hmm. and tur turn one setting up for turn two and three instead of trying to just do everything right out the bat. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm usually like if I have two parachutists, it's bring them both in. Not not bring one in, save one for later. Hell, don't bring them in at all. Save them for turn two. Really add that mystery in there. You know who knows? I'm in, I'm impatient, guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean pa patience and um, not seeing red in the third turn is extremely important. Yeah, it's hard. And like, it's definitely for, for something it's, that's hard to do. It's, it's taken me years the to same do it. List for weeks on end. Not even changing the list for each month's worth of missions. Just I mean, I played, I don't know, I played the same list for, for three or four months when I was playing OSS. Um, granted, you could kind of do that with OSS because it's snipers, HMGs, robots that move 6'4". Yeah. Um, uh, three, uh, what are they called? Proxies. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. that was before they cost more. But it was like... Sure, I'll always have a proxy engineer and the T2 sniper with hidden deployment and the forward observer because, I mean, it's like, I don't know, it was like 50 or 60 points. And then a full core of Dakini with a sniper and HMG and, and two paramedics. That's your core. And it, yeah, my, and it three, uh, my, my three Azura Harris is really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really it expensive. Was painful, but it was painful. <laughs> Dude, it, it was hard to take those guys down. It was like, well, I don't have a hacker to really do anything with. I was like, well, I've got a hacker. a hacker. I'm like, yeah, there, I know. But I'm onto a BTS-6 and WIP-15. Come at me, brah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Nice. The uh, Mark II yeah, losing, Mark II losing its hidden deployment. I'm kind of sad oh, about that. Oh, wow. That's a big change. Yeah, it's now, it's now a, uh, an ODD marker, essentially. Oh, really? So it's just a camo marker. It's still got camo it's marker, still got but magnetism minus six. Interesting. Yeah. So it's, it, yeah. So it's, it's no longer hidden, hidden to you or what was to you. So. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. It, it was too good. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was good. It was good. And, uh, the, I think the, uh, the, uh, Mark five proxy now half a swick. I don't think it was a swick before. Um, is that the Ford Observer one with dual sub yeah. submachine guns? Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. And grenade. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is he still like ten points though? Oh, it was definitely oppressive. Uh, I think it's thirteen <laughs> points now. So it went up. It went up a couple points. Uh, okay. That sounds affordable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's affordable. Yeah, <laughs> and I think it's got um, no wounding capacitation. Oh my god. Yeah. So. All the all the yeah. boxes do. <laughs> all oh, of them do. Damn. I mean, when yeah. when you're not enslaved to your meat suit, you don't care what happens to the meat suit. That's pretty awesome. Pretty much. Apparently, yeah. uh, Aleph is on the docket for uh, the next January army pack. Is that what I heard? <laughs> yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 
Yep. They're getting a couple things. I don't remember what's in the packet, but they look pretty cool. What is it? Is stuff it, that is it? was in Cold Front and oh. Beyond Cold Front, I think. Oh, I thought, I thought oh, it was. Oh, it's where they. Okay. They're, they're, they're combining the two player army box into it. Yeah. Oh, the army pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I don't think it, they're getting any new stuff. They're just re-reboxing it. Re this is good, though, right? Because, wasn't because yeah. like, isn't Aleph uh, a little bit, like, not on the production block? Or, like, obviously they are, but was there? No. They're, they're, they're full they, on. They, they just don't really need anything. They're getting new Naga sculpts. Yeah, they really uh, either don't. February. I think they're getting I new Naga sculpts February. in February. Oh, that's yeah. great. But, I mean, their, their models are really good, and OSS just came out what last year steel, steel phalanx is, is still available to get all the models for their uh well steel phalanx new steel phalanx is out of print okay yeah, so, print. so I, I thought one of them was out of print yeah steel phalanx yeah, a, yeah uh i don't think eric i don't think they're gonna do a uh nomad LF adepticon release or not adepticon adepticon release uh, the, it might uh, be it, it'll probably be um Corregidor, I don't even know who else. Corregidor Toha. <laughs> no. <laughs> I want I, I want Toha. No. Have the salt flow. Something is due for code one. Have you guys, Um, you know, it's funny because I mean mainly the people I play are playing Hakka Slam and I study Hakka Slam as well. Oops, wrong button. But the uh, a lot of the public opinion seems to be that Nomads are the uh, kings of the castle as far as one of the strongest factions of N4 uh, currently. Is that something you guys have, you know, thought about or just seen people saying? Nomads have always been strong simply because they have such a huge toolbox. Well, the yeah. more tools you have available for a mission, the better you're going to be. Uh, I mean, I'd say Vanilla Nomad just has everything you could possibly yeah. want. Good skirmishers, good war bands, really good great fires, Good tags, yeah. Big guns, lots of tags. I mean... Yeah, the, gecko, uh, the geckos are pr pretty yeah. badass, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Like, the, Vanilla Nomads are, are very strong. Right. Uh, and again, yeah, that just comes from their tools. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, they were supposed to bring out at all. two new armies for Code 1, but that could have changed because of the uh, pandemic. Well, I don't, I don't think they've ever announced when they're going to be coming out with the two new armies. They just said, eh, well, fair. eventually. They said they will be coming out with them. Yeah, eventually, yeah. yeah. Um, what do they have currently? It's Yujing, Pano, uh, Combined Come Army, and... O12. 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 Oh, 12, that's right. Yeah. I can yeah. see LF being brought It'll in. It'll probably be LF and Ariad yeah, now because they've done, well, Hakazam. Probably not. I could probably see yeah. Hakazam and Nomads, to be honest. Code 1, no sectorials. So. Yeah, I could see that. That's Although, with them wanting to get the bear sculpt out, it would make sense Cosmo Float and Corregidor, because Corregidor kind of needs a bit of love when it comes to the uh, starter box. Uh, yearly around Adepticon was the plan 10 months ago, as said. Who knows now, especially with the actual convention canceled, yeah? Yeah, that's true. That, yeah. that is crazy, that Adepticon. That really messed up last year's um, release schedule for a lot of companies is there is always these big reveals, you know, at these events. Um, so I guess besides Adepticon, there's hoping for – I mean, Nova Open is usually Adepticon and Nova are my, my big go-tos. You, you guys uh, – Well, Gen Con, Gen Con is when they do yeah. – big release too yeah, yeah. And I doubt, gen con's usually I doubt the gen let's look definitely well, bear in mind for gen con they did their own release video schedule for it i mean yeah. they're not they're not afraid of simply holding a infinity week themselves in house and releasing information oh right yeah, yeah i'm sure they're i'm sure they'll do something like that for adapticon too it's their spring release and then their late summer release right before um what is it, the Worlds or whatever that happens, which isn't going to yeah. happen probably. Oh, no, it, it's yeah, already it's canceled. It's not happening. Oh, it's already canceled? Yeah. Sold? Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's no satellites this year or this season. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. So they'll probably, they don't have a timeline now. They can kind of push it to whenever. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully Nova Open I mean, will happen this year. But... Uh, 20, 2021 <laughs> is sort of the year that will happen as a consequence of 2020. I, I don't think... We're going to see a lot of big events. I think we're just going to see events as lockdowns come come off. Yeah. Um, 
which hopefully, you know, in the next three, four months, that'll, that'll start happening with the, with the release of the vaccine quicker and quicker. Um, but I mean, we're just not going to have any major events, which I think is fine, to be honest. I think just having a chill year, maybe let <laughs> Corvus Belly just catch up on their own shit and stop coming out with new shit. Please just stop. Take a chill pill. Get your stuff in order. And then maybe next year and come back to the ridiculous amount of sectorals you want to release. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair. And hey, there's at least a uh, tabletop simulator. I know it's not for everybody, but you can still play in events. You know, I, I'm in three global tournaments right now and you can get your ass kicked just like real life. That is true. <laughs> I, I did. I did try a tabletop simulator event. Um, but again, I do a lot of custom paint jobs and works on my models that I just feel really down playing tabletop simulating like i spent hours and hours on these models and they're not going anywhere yeah yep. i hear you it's definitely better better to play in real life for sure it's very satisfying but 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 you know we can we can get but some games on it's, it's I'm, I'm, I'm glad it is keeping the community involved i'm glad it's getting folks interested in in, in infinity because i know it, it is pulling in new folks yeah um, even with tts it's, it's bringing new folks in it's making people interested in the game so I will not begrudge to, to TTS at all, even though I don't like it, simply because it is doing what we need. Yeah, yeah, that's very fair. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is what we got. Uh, let's see. So we got about 15. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things that have been popping up in the old noggin. Oh yeah, I was uh, I was just remembered how much uh, I was getting. We were mentioning snipers and that badass Alef sniper. I'm excited for it. I really love Alef. Those proxies being no one in cap that makes me more interested than I've ever been. Um, but the um, I really got wrecked by the Hido sniper. I played uh, White Company in my most recent battle with Cosmoflot, and um, I thought I was gonna do pretty good. Turn one, I scored my two points. I scored more. I dominated more quadrants. You know, on turn one, played supremacy. Uh, turn two turned around pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. The know is nice. I mean, it's really a, nice. A light heavy infantry BS 13 MSV2 model. Linkable. Yeah. It link, linkable. Um, it, it, there's value there. Not dro not yeah. going unconscious. Like, I'd say it's that one little tiny notch slightly better than, um, what's the Varuna one? The, oh, I don't uh, know about that. Yeah, it I mean, it's not better. The, and, yeah, and, but yeah. but to, but but two sort of wounds. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. survive. It's more survivable per se in that it's up longer and then keeps shooting and then just drop. As area, yeah, I, you know, area, yeah, you, uh, you pay attention uh, to the MSV two and you don't forget it. Oh, yeah. when you're playing area, and yeah, I, was, I think uh, I was we Cosmo did. Fly. Yeah, I think we did Norfolk back in February as the last event before March. lockdown. March it, was that? It was the week, like, yeah, it was the week. Yeah, it was the week before lockdown. Band. Yeah, I, uh, Lewis took, uh, what is it, Invincible Army and had that hideout sniper. While the hideout sniper didn't do a lot, its presence made me had to go around it, and, and it ruined a lot of strategy simply because I knew I couldn't face it because of the MSV2. Good armor, yeah. good good ballistic skill but also getting around it was very difficult because it has a link team covering its back yeah yep and armor i mean armor three of it it I mean, there's, there's value with that now especially mm -hmm. without trying to crit it off the board yeah yeah it was it was tough i just noticed it had zero g as well which gave me flashbacks to playing power pack versus brad and that was uh, that was a really rough time as well that one has the i was surprised in power pack with the uh you know the the, the decompression zones you put out i i didn't realize i thought it was two i didn't think that it was two per player you put four of these uh circular templates, templates out on out, the board yeah. and they count as difficult terrain zero g um, oh wow yeah so it's Does really, the terrain terrain total still works through those right terrain total yeah. or zero yes, g terrain total. Okay. Yeah. All right. I didn't know if you had to have zero G only, no. even though total would include that. Yeah, it gets tricky because they, um, because you have the split deployment zones 
plus those those pieces so already people are placed in kind of they're not they can't be spread across the board as comfortably as they might usually be so while they're kind of funneled into the left and right corners of the board you can also make it even more tricky to move by putting these de decompression zones down and based on who goes first and second dictates the order that the decompression zones go onto the table and sometimes that can be like you can place yours first and then the other opponent like doubles up on that and makes it a really difficult zone to move through and you're like no that's not what i meant <laughs> so they're there it's a weird mission power pack yeah. it, it's tricky there's a lot to do it's turn by turn scoring and in-game scoring and that reminds me of a lesson that brad has taught me that i've been thinking about more and that is with the new tournament scoring uh that it's not necessarily you don't have to necessarily go for these massive victory differences like you used to you really just need to win and get five points that's it you don't need to get all eight, or you don't have to have this huge well, hell, gap. I mean, if you win three to one. That's still or, great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the olden days, did you not used to get, and in three, did you not used to get tournament points if you got a win? Oh, so if you were to win by, what is it, four? Five or more victory points. Five or it's more five victory or more. points, you yeah. got three tournament points or whatever. But if you just won, what did you, you get? One. You got just two. And if two. you got a draw, you got one. Well, yeah. If you got a loss, yeah. you got zero. Okay. Yeah. So you get more points than you used to ever before. So really just just winning. And that's what we talked about earlier about the whole not bringing as many specialists, not putting as much attention in the mission on solely accomplishing the mission. You have to kill some shit. You got to get some positional uh, advantage. Um, otherwise, you know, if you, if you play, I think if you play the mission too much, you, you may not have, um, you don't have as many resources as you used to be able to, being that you have to only have 15 orders. And yeah, I just think it's um, it's an interesting dynamic. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's a lot more onus on the player that if they are good, they'll probably get some kind of victory points from a loss. And I, I think it's going to really help yeah. differentiate those people who are getting zero because they're really not playing the the, the the mission versus the people getting one or two victory points because they're really playing the mission. They're really going after their opponent. And so they should have a higher state of a loss. Um, to put those right. people who try together and the the, the real losers together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, um, I mean, if you get 10 owed um, versus someone who uh, lost, you know, six to five, um, I feel that you know all that effort you put into that those five points should. I mean, it's not like oh, give out participation trophies for people, but um, you played to the mission, you probably came really close to beating the person um but something just didn't go your way at some point in the game could have been that last roll um and they got maybe one more console or they moved into one zone and beat you by a couple of points um yeah. uh but you know like I, I i think you know you've got people who are they win they win and then they lose but they're really close it will bring them up um and it still shows the skill of the player they'll, they'll end up pointing higher because what i hear a lot of um is the last two people um will play a game and it's a really close game but because the what would have been like the number two player ends up being you know like a fourth or ninth or eighth or fourth or yeah. something because they got no points for yeah. you know getting close to winning yeah so now you have yeah. a chance of the top table at the end of the tournament, still being the top table. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, like a, a mission like Power Pack, it has three points dedicated to turn-by-turn -turn scoring, but everything else is, you know, all throughout the game or at the end of the game. And, like, sometimes it's good to, because you don't need these major victory point differences, you just want that win or you want that um, five points plus win, then you can there's certain points that you can choose to not go for and still be fine as far as your tournament ranking um so like that that very first turn like i tried to do too much too quickly and i tried to do the turn by turn scoring and go deep behind enemy lines to touch the power pack console um but maybe on turn one it's not the, I, that i let that point go away you don't need every yeah. single point you know if, if positional mm -hmm. and getting points later you may have less points but you know you, you take the victory from it. it it's a better move so i'm trying to i'm trying to think about that a little bit more as far as yeah i only need five to get my my max score and a and a, and a win or in, even just winning is a still a solid tournament score you don't need 10 to win right you don't need 10 <laughs> to win yeah 
Because sometimes you, you make desperate moves for points that don't matter when you could have done better in the long run, you know? Especially with those hi those hybrid missions of turn by turn scoring and in game combined, Some, I, maybe in your list building stage you're only trying to accomplish half the mission, but it achieves all the points you need. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just little things I've been trying to think about, but again, get to the table, go for the charge, kill, kill, kill. <laughs> yeah, figuring out that balance between kill, 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 and get the mission done can definitely be a skill unto its own. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. For sure. Hey man, it's taken me like what, four and a half years to. You're cool. You're cool as a cucumber, Brad. <laughs> man, I still go for the cinematic. I'm like, man, this is not going to get the mission done, but it's going to be so cool. I know. Right? That's what I'm. And then lo and behold, I fail the mission. I'm like, yep, I saw that coming. <laughs> yeah. But what if I crit you? <laughs> That's what I. Find. That's what I yeah. find. Crits aren't guaranteed anymore. I so find don't, myself. Don't go for that. that pistol crit. Yeah. I can't just throw my Corgi Spitfire at something and make it go away now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Although honestly, when I played you, you just didn't crit that much with those ones. I don't know why. The, the entire Baltimore brawl, I ran him active for the majority of the entire game. He never crit the entire Baltimore brawl. Oh. Two numbers on the dice to choose from. He'd roll two and whatever number was less than needed to crit. I'm like, I hate you so much. Uh, You're yeah. such a cool looking model, but I hate you so much right now. Which, which he got crit by a hard case Quarish. three times in a row. So speaking of wow. quarries, like, I, what about uh, what do you think, um, Zach, about? Um, uh, Tariq. I find myself not liking Tariq as much anymore without Fatality Level 2. Uh, I mean, he's not bad. I mean, he's a damage 16 Spitfire. Um, he's uh, he's, yeah. L he's LT Level 2. Um, I mean, he's got his place. I was never a huge fan of him to begin with, simply because I he's big, he's difficult to maneuver with, and he, he's not much better than a normal Quarige Spitfire. Mm -hmm. um, for a lot so less I mean, points, right? Yeah, Multiple wounds, though, points. right? He's two wounds instead of one, yeah. Uh, but he also doesn't have bioimmunity anymore, so he can't he Ooh. can't take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah, he's hard, he's hard to swallow. Like I, I have yeah. a hard time bringing him. In or he's he's him. really cool. He's got some cool rules, but I I'm not a huge fan of big expensive characters. Yeah. And, and Tanaka makes a good point. I mean, like, I am okay with them getting rid of Fatality Level 2. And Tanaka says it was a bit of a negative play experience. You know, the whole ones critting people didn't feel great. Um, and, and yeah, Fat 2 was a bit of a negative play experience. I didn't, to be fair, I did not like the crit system as it was to begin with. That's true. So too, when right? I took advantage of it using Sheskin yeah. and, and uh, my Quarige, it didn't feel good, but it did, but it didn't. It, it was a very mixed bag of feelings. Like, boy, I am blowing you off the table, but it's not really my fault. It's these dice and the fact I get two numbers to crit. Yeah. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. I was like, oh, no, I rolled a one. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, you know, it's like I got my TR bot. It's like, oh, man, I'm hitting on 11. It's like I roll three nines and a 10. It's like, oh, I rolled a one. And I'm I like, rolled a man, one. Get out of Dodge. Get off like, the board. Like, <laughs> yeah. I want to throw funny. this model. <laughs> I mean, I, I think Quarage losing Fat 2, though, and getting a whole bucket of new skills, they have traded up for sure. Oh, yeah. All of them having Natural Born Warrior and Bioimmunity. Is, did they is gain Bioimmunity, or did they already have they, it? They kept it. They had Bioimmunity oh, before. But it's changed. But they got a buff because it changed. Yeah. yeah. What's their, and the fact what's they got two armor? extra CC and Natural Born Warrior is good. BTS is what's three. Their... Three. BTS three. Okay. All right. They're so armor always two, armor three, BTS three. Yeah. Armor yeah. two, okay. BTS three. So you're okay. you're, you're Kawarji, uh, all day over over a uh, Tariq then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the points. Yeah, I guess the only the, yeah. the only negative is that they're one one wound. Yeah, they're one wound. So I was just looking. But at I mean, playing Hawk. I mean, you got doctors that. You, you got doctors out the butt. Seventeens, eighteens. I was sad that the yeah, doctor. I think the lost Kawarji, his Doctor plus three. Which, I yeah. Mean, what are they? What's their whip? Fourteen? Yeah, they're yeah, fourteen. 17. That's 
it's it's not guaranteed, but it's pretty darn close. Man, he, I, he's he's only failed his role like once or twice, but Ram all has cubes. So this uh, this Kawaj with the NCO yeah. and MSV two is pretty sexy. MK twelve. Yeah, MK twelve with plus one damage. Thank you very much. Yeah, to damage that's pretty, sixteen. That's pretty sick. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they've got a. Uh, oh yeah, they got immunity yeah. shock now. They've all they all have BS attack plus one damage. Um, oh, they're shock oh, immune now. Yeah, they're shock immune and bio immune. Yeah, their their points overall cool. have remained the same. They've just got multiple stuff. So we've got NCO multi special visor level two damage sixteen mark twelve. We've got a damage fifteen shock Spitfire, um, chain of command. Okay. Doctor. Oh nope, Doctor. Bio Tucker. immunity. It it doesn't like unless there's a counteractive rule against bio immunity. Having bio immunity doesn't really make sense. Just make the model three armor three BTS. <laughs> well, right? it, it it gets rid of like if it's a normal roll AP or something like that. Yeah. It gets rid of the AP factor. Switch switching the damage type. Okay. Gets rid of the okay. damage modifier. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. I, I see. I see your point then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, then I feel like. Well, yeah. Okay, that's fair. It makes more yeah. sense now then. I never thought about that. It's aspect. it's. Uh, I I don't like how it's worded and works because I feel like it's really clunky, um, but I see its use. And yeah, Core Eater Armor One VTS Three, so it it really buffs them. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm. At ten percent more successes, so yeah. nothing wrong with that. Oh, and all their CC weapons are AP plus shock. Okay. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty cool. Yeah, Eric agrees. Very clunky. Yeah. And they got nerfed with the with the super jump nerf, which I don't also like. Yeah, I can't say that I love the the super jump. Did we ever? Why? What was? Yeah. I don't know why they did that to super jump. I never. I don't know. I use super jump a lot, and I now I can't the, use it all in the same way that I used to use I it. I think yeah. the whole jump up and then shoot from the middle of the air. I think that they didn't like the way that that felt, but they already they facted was, though. Like the, they 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 had it all fact that the rule for the fact came into this edition where if you're being shot at from your front yeah. whether you can see it or not you can still shoot back, that fixed the issue. I I don't I don't I, I think don't... it was it was this that that the fact that they had to FAQ that, that made it like weird or clunky. No, so I, I think like... it's because of the fall damage aspect because super jump ignored um... fall damage to a certain state. You think can't say, oh, it ignores fall damage. There's no such thing as fall damage. So yeah. well, you're not how are they you're, there, there is fall damage. You're just right. You're just not allowed to purposefully do it. Exactly. No, there is no fall damage. They not at all. Fall damage. Yeah, oh. just, if fall if they can't now. get to the, uh, they can't get to their happen. target, it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah. They right. rubber band back to where they were. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. It's so just like it, super it, jump for its uses of jumping up over things now can't really happen from most models so yeah uh, i mean like i don't that that was the whole that's what i thought was great about i mean i feel like they should have said okay super jump works how it does you can jump up do crazy maneuvers but you can't shoot while you super jump yeah, yeah. The, the amount of times i was super jumping and shooting or super jumping my doctor to get to someone who i needed to revive it, it is a lot it's a lot of times that i did that i used super jump quite a bit for my maneuverability yeah i miss it yeah. i liked it a lot my dog warriors do you guys think that a faq is inbound at any point there's definitely some things no. that people got questions on i mean how do we get I mean, so many maybe FAQs? faq to clear up just general questions they yeah. they may do that but they're they're historically pretty slow at faqs yeah R really we, 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 we saw we saw an influx of modifications to the rules document um, early on, but I think as time goes on and things sort of settle, there's going to be less FAQs and less modifications of the of the rules document. Have you guys? I seen think that, the... and that was what they said when they did this new living rules document is is that they want to just basically make that the source of truth. So we'll, what we will see is that has been changed. Although, are they say? Are, is there a, a change log with it to say, hey, this changed? I don't think there is, and I think that's what a lot of folks are asking for is a change log. Yeah. If you make a change and no one sees it in the woods, did it happen? Does a change actually happen? <laughs> <laughs> like, a whole tournament happens and no one saw your one rules change the week before because no one's scouring the PDF documents. 
That'd be yeah. nice if they did that, yeah. D just quick question before we close out, but have you guys seen on the Corvus Belly forum where they have like the provisional rules answer? And it's like an FAQ, it, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. What is that? Is yeah. that done by somebody from Corvus Belly? It seems like there's yeah. like an it's mm -hmm. like an official answer, right? Yeah, it's Heloise and I don't ITQ know who it is. or IJ, I, I, IJW, IJW or? yeah, IJW. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and IJ, I don't think I don't I, IJW isn't an employee, but is someone who has been working with them forever. I think. Uh, yeah, so I think get... IJW works with Heloise, but is not an official Corvus Belly yeah. right. employee. Eric but he on, still speaks with authority. Yeah, on the rules. Team. Oh, he's on the rules team. Oh, he's on the oh, rules team. Okay, okay. So, never mind right. then. <laughs> so, so I haven't, yeah. I haven't digested all these, but I've found that there's like, sometimes people point to those, like, that's the answer to this question. You know, like mm -hmm. there's certain things. It that is happen. an answer because it's an explanation by a official representative of the rules team, really. So, so yes, yeah, so I want to yeah. dive, I want to dive through that. I think there's some good reading in there for sure. Uh, he yeah. does the, he does the wiki support, they say. So yeah, I'm going to definitely oh, okay. be searching and reading and seeing if I can find any golden nuggets in the uh, provisional rules answers. But I just Googled it for anybody that's curious. Provisional rules answer, Corvus Belly, it'll come right up uh, with some different forms uh, there. So I'm going to yeah. check those stuff out. I think it's pretty, pretty interesting. That's the best thing we have right now to a FAQ or an explanation to things that we're wondering about. And mm -hmm. perhaps we can ask in those forums more questions that we might have and get them answered. Um, but yeah, guys, it's been an hour and it's been a good time. And uh, we have managed to enjoy talking about the wonderful game of Infinity without a plan. Um, Eric says, IJW goes by what the rules yeah. say and not what we think they say. Pending Corpus Belly's changing the thing. Nice. Yeah, I look forward to reading some of those and getting to know um, IJW through his, his post. Uh, but anyways, um, more to come. I think Brad and I are either going to practice Tabletop Simulator tomorrow. We might play a game. We're probably just going to practice tabletop simulator check depends it. on how not the we'll see how the, it goes the wi-fi runs we'll see how it goes that's yeah, not too bad once you get a game under your belt it it's it comes second hat it's not it's not difficult yeah uh berserk's class example eric appreciate you appreciate everybody that tuned in and uh we will see you uh with another talk show the week after next bi-weekly not next week but the week after that and uh this is episode seven episode eight is coming and hope to see you guys more soon keep taking fun seriously and we'll catch you next time